Good afternoon, everybody. I want to thank you all for joining us today. We have Brenda Liberti back again for one of her great flower arranging classes. And this will be recorded and available on our Huntington County Library YouTube page for you to watch again or to let others know about it. And you can also watch her Valentine's flower class that is still on our the Huntington County Library YouTube page with over 100 views. So thank you for joining us today and I'm gonna get right to it. And for those of you who are watching, please make sure you are muted because we are recording. So thank you, Brenda, I'll pass it over to you. Thank you so much and hello everyone and welcome. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to tune in. Uh, Thank goodness we finally have some sunshine. I think it finally feels like spring today and no rain. That was a crazy, week, crazy storm last night. Um, but just a quick background, I'm Brenda Liberti. I created Bee Lee Blooms in November of 2020. Uh, during COVID, I discovered my passion for putting together flowers. So I'm always learning myself, but I love to pass on you know, tips and tricks that I have learned, especially the library groups are always so much fun to teach to, and you guys are so receptive to learning, and I love it. So we, uh, as a family, took up beekeeping, uh, and that's where the B-E-E -E in, in Bee Lee Blooms comes in, uh, and Lee is my middle name. Um, so, you know, it's been a, a successful year and a half, and I'm so excited. I, I I keep busy every week and uh, I'm just very thankful and grateful I get to do what I've learned to love and pass that on. So welcome again and uh, happy spring. As you could tell, we've got a spring flower tulip edition. Um, I had the pleasure of speaking to Mary Van Dyke from Van Dyke Farms down in Millville, New Jersey. It's way south and um, it's a family owned farm. For 65 years, they've been in business. And this is, you know, their, their products, the, um, the tulips that you see, uh, hopefully that you see around um, in stores are, um, are, well, they could come from Holland or they could come from Van Dyke, but hopefully, you know, it's a local farm that you have supported and um, they, they sell over 1.3 million stems every year. And that's a lot of tulips and uh, they do grow other things, but tulips are their specialty. So uh, I was able to ask them about, you know, what are the different varieties? Cause there's really so many, uh, I don't know if you've ever really looked around. So we have, um, you know, some beautiful tulips here and something that I did is called reflexing. So what I have done is pulled the, the petals back gently. Um, and I will show you how to do that. Um, actually, we can just, you know, start with reflexing tulips. So we have this beautiful tulip. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna gently hold the bottom of it Maybe you could see it closer. I also have my camera on so you could see this other angle. Um, and if you gently, from the bottom, from the base, just kind of give it a little tug and fold it back, it will stay open. Now, I find with reflex tulips that they may not stay as long, but that's okay. They look fabulous. So if you have a party and you wanted to reflex a couple stems of your tulips, I think it gives it such a different look. And so voila, by simply gently folding that back, you get this beautiful different look to your tulip. And I find, you know, tulip leaves, sometimes they have their own thing going on. So if you need to remove the leaf, then that's fine, you just pull it off. But sometimes, you know, make it work with your arrangement. So this guy I have, so I have a, it's a taller vase 
And I love the way that this is just kind of draping and some of them are pointing up. And, you know, sometimes sim simplicity is the way to go. Um, I did also ask Mary about what are the best ways to keep tulips fresh? And because um, I grew up, I always used to put a few pennies in the bottom of the water. And I thought that was my trick for keeping them straight up. And that it may still be true, but she said all time best way to keep your tulips healthy are these flower packets that come with flowers. You find them at the supermarket. Um, I've also found out the three secret ingredients that are in it. It's a, <laughs> it's a citric acid, sugar, and bleach mix. It's non-toxic. Um, you, know, you still don't want to consume it, but um, that is the secret ingredient to these packets. And it is the best way to keep your flowers healthy. So with tulips, she said, it's important to change the water every day cool to almost like room temperature, tap water is fine. Uh, you never wanna do too hot or too cold. And also you're going to wanna trim the stems every day if you can. So if you can kind of see, this is maybe a little hard. Um, the bottom of this one has gotten a little brown. So I've got my flower cutting shears and I'm going to just snip it, snip it on an angle. Tulips love to drink lots of water. Uh, using your average kitchen shears is not recommended. Uh, it can pinch the stem a little bit and that'll prevent the water from, you know, uh, from them drinking the water properly. Um, and, you know, something interesting about tulips as well is that they're phototrophic and that means that they will, you know, bend and kind of move towards their light source. And if you can think of another phototrophic flower, sunflowers would probably come to mind. You know, they kind of move um, and reorient themselves with the light source. Uh, so that's always a fun fact about tulips. So I've trimmed this stem and I'm, you know, I'm just gonna add him in here. Uh, and again, I. You know, don't have to overthink it. I love to do different heights, you know, so you've got one low, one higher. They are gonna continue to grow. They're gonna keep, you know, growing in length. So if you wanted to cut it short, just know that it'll keep growing. And every day when you change the water, if you wanna just give it a quick trim, that'll keep them healthy. And, you know, if you're spending money on a product, it's important that, it doesn't just die on you. Um, something else that's interesting. So I love the look of these tulips. So if you can see how different they are from say the yellow ones, cause they have this almost like this cabbage like texture to it. These are called parrot tulips. And actually this one in particular is called the super parrot, which I thought was really cool. Um, and it's a, a, a variegated form, which means, you know, it has multi colors to it. So this is a, a green and white. And it's so much fun, I think, to add different textures to things because, you know, if you ever drew a tulip, say, if you were doing like a cartoon tulip, you might just kind of do like a U and then do some triangles. And that's what we think of as tulips, but they come in such a variety. So if you're at the store, take a good look around and, and, you know, if there's something a little bit different or if there's a color in particular that you like, then get that one, you know, get something that makes you happy. Um, and an interesting fact, and this wasn't verified, but I, I, I read online that um, these flowers, the parrot variety, um, it was created with, um, uh, it was a, it's a mutation, really. So I guess back in the 70s, farmers were using uh, radiation to help mutate their crops. Um, it sounds really <laughs> a little odd, but um, 
they they found that you know it really changed the the look of their average tulip and uh to this day they're still around so if that's part of a mutation then i love it um <laughs> this one here uh this is the this one is called honeymoon um and it's a nice light pink and again a different edge you've got this beautiful like frilled edge and the smoother side, so it's not quite the cabbage looking that we found on the parrot one, but um, you could reflex these ones as well. If you wanted, usually they're, they're sold in groups of 10. So if you wanted to take two or three, and again, just gently fold back those little petals there, they're going to stay and just look, you know, look a little different in your arrangement. I love this. It's pretty easy, you know, just has to, it takes a little bit of a, a little bit of practice. And so here's an example of maybe too many leaves being on. So I'm just gonna simply pull those off give this, I, you know, I'm going to give us a nice, I'm going to cut a lot off of this stem because I know that he is going to, to grow. So I could put it in a, you know, in a, a lower vase. Maybe I would even cut this a little bit more. These cubes are great. They're very popular. Um, something I wanted to show people that they've asked about, a common question that I get is to how to get that leaf in the bottom of the, of the glass so that you kind of cover the bottom of the stems. And it's a really easy thing to do. I typically get two of these leaves, at least maybe three, depending on the size. I give it a quick flip and I get that stem off. And I have this sharp paring knife. So what I do is I take the back of the leaf and you can kind of feel like there's a really hard vein in there. So I am going to then run the paring knife and hopefully it'll show up in my other camera view here. I'm gonna run the paring knife along, see if you can hear it actually, you can hear it cut. just trimming, I kind of scraped off that thick vein. So it's a little bit more pliable now. So I'm gonna get my glass, take my leaf, take the non-vein side and just simply put it in the water. It bends so much easier and voila, when I add my flowers to it now, you won't necessarily see the bottoms. And let's see, let's add some mini hydrangea here. I love these guys. I love this color. Like a jade green kind of color. Um, well, you know what, let's put together an arrangement. That's what we're gonna do. So this is gonna be, a, again, the low cube. Something that you can do, the ways to keep your flowers from falling out of the cube, you can actually take tape and you can take clear tape and make a grid along the top of the vase like a giant checkerboard, say. Um, and, and in between each square that's open, you can insert a stem and then it at least holds it into place. So that's one way. I did not tape this one, but what I like to do is I take my hydrangea, I've cut it and I've put it on an angle. I'm going to take another one. I pull off the leaves. You don't want any leaves in the bottom of the water. 
this is going to create bacteria and it's going to shorten the lifespan of your flower. So any stem that you put into a vase, just make sure the leaves are pulled off from the bottom. So I'm going to crisscross this guy and insert him in. So now we're, we're creating a base. Kind of like a, a little spider web holding, if you will, for the flowers to go and hold into. Cut this one again. So kind of fluff them up a little bit. So this right now is, is you know, three hydrangea. I'm going to take some other greens. This is my favorite green to use. This is called Israeli Ruscus. And what I do is I like to try to use the whole stem. So I cut it in half because I'm going to strip away those leaves that are gonna be on the bottom. I'm gonna stick that in there. We now have the other half of what I've cut. Strip away the bottom. Now he's not necessarily as pretty, so I'm gonna bury him a little bit, but at least the, the few leaves that stick out, it's a little added something. And I was able to use this twice essentially, which is great. So now I'm gonna stick another one in this corner. Um, here. So you start to build your base. And now I'm gonna take my reflex tulip and he has a home. He's gonna stay in a little bit better there. And let's see what else. Let's take one of those parents. Their, their leaves have some cool texture to it as well. So I'm gonna keep these two in there. This one's gonna be a little cumbersome. So I'm gonna take it off. I'm gonna give it a good cut on an angle. And we're gonna stick this guy in. And again, knowing that it's going to grow, I'm gonna keep it a little bit shorter because even by tomorrow or the next day, it's going to look very, very different. Um, my Alstromeria. Alstromeria is a great stem to use, long lasting. So again, I'm going to strip all those leaves off that it, I don't need. I'm gonna give it a good short, and in here. There's really no rhyme or reason to, oh, you gotta do, you know, put the yellow here, or put the orange here. You do what you want and what, you know, what makes you happy. If you wanna see all orange, then put in all orange. If you wanna go one of every color, go for it. I've really found, and I've spoken to enough people that there are no more rules when it comes to flowers, even when it comes to height. Uh, I kind of thought, you know, you had to do like a one and a half ratio with your stems and the vase and you don't. It's really a lot more relaxed, which is nice. Personally, I do like to spread things out. So I'm going to use the last Alstromeria. questions, you know, feel free to just shout them out along the way. Um, already nice and fluffy. So let's see. And I rotate my arrangements as I go to kind of just see it at, at different angles. Um, it, you really can't go wrong with spring flowers. They're just so beautiful, bright, vibrant colors. Um, Oh, let's a little yellow in here. The stems, you know, they they 
they make life and decorating easy because they are, they're just perfect. Like you don't even need all this extra filler. A little yellow in here. Flexed. I'll kind of put him at the top, kind of like as a showcase. And again, the base of this hydrangea and the ruscus helps to hold these flowers into place. So yeah, that, that's looking really cute there. Got a nice angle. You don't so much see the stem because You've got the palm leaf in the bottom there. One more. Let's go for three yellow. Fall up. There's additional little flowers you could put in. This is wax flower. You wanted to add just a little pop of color to an area that has a lot of green. You just rip off a piece of the wax flower and Insert it wherever you'd like a little more pop of color. There's too much orange over here. I'm gonna break it up and put some pink. Something else that I love to do. So you have these great little mini carnations and sometimes they come really, really super closed. A great way to open that up is kind of just you're gonna put your fingers in there and kind of just do one of those. It's like a little fluff, if you will. And voila, he's open. And it doesn't harm the stem in any way. Carnations are a really hardy flower. So you can then add that pop of a carnation there. It's looking really cute. Um, if you wanted to do something with a little more height, get a taller vase. And again, use the leaves of the tulips to help kind of drape down. And I have this great, here, this great larkspur, which is a fun springy looking flower that has some great height to it. So you see the stem is really nice and long. So if you have a big oversized vase and don't know what to put in it, Larkspur is a good answer. Snapdragons is another fun, big tall flower to use. So I'm gonna add some, you know, this guy's a little, Take that one off. And again, anything that might be touching the water, I'm just gonna rip that off and, and clean it. Um, doesn't even really need much of a flip. Stock is another example of a tall, fun flower. And stock smells amazing. I know I, I have to take my Claritin <laughs> sometimes these flowers in the spring, it's too much, but um, it's so pretty. So I'm like, you know, so I'm looking here at heights. I'm gonna go a little bit shorter than the larkspur, but a little bit taller than the tulips. 
And again, this may change tomorrow if the tulips start growing. And let's see, let's do another one. We'll do, I'm kind of measuring it up. I think I want him to go a little bit higher. I want to do like five purple. So this, and I take a look at the stem and I kind of see, I turn it and look at what it's doing. I need something to go, I'd like for something to go in this direction now. And this one is perfect because he's kind of bent towards this, the direction that I'd like. So I'm going to use him here. I'm going to kind of measure him up, give him a, a quick clip and Put him in. And it, you know, that's what I've something I for sure have found out about um, floral arranging and my business in particular. So I, I I can't I find I can't do like a cookie cutter arrangement of something that you found online from you know, uh, uh, you know some of these larger sites. Um, I just can't necessarily you know recreate that same exact thing. I find that. Flowers, they're going to do what they want to do, and you should embrace it, and, and it makes it so much more fun, and, and, and I feel like I'm using more creativity than, um, than just something so static looking. So I'm going to use one more piece, measure this up. And this larkspur has, you know, fun buds on it. And it's great because again, it, it's just got a lot of different things going on. I'm going to rotate this. And I'm going to stick it back here. You can quite tell there's all different heights, little pops of color. Does it need a lot? Of flowers in it, you know, just the, the height in itself and, and just some vibrant colors. So you've got some pinks and some purples and, and the vase itself is, is really fun with a touch of blue. And that's great, you know, for a counter or in the middle of a, a table where you, you know, want to put some height. Um, and if you wanted to add additional Decoration, eucalyptus is another favorite of mine. This one is called a bonsai eucalyptus. I love this because it's got little tiny petals. It's not like your standard eucalyptus where it's necessarily big. And um, this is nice. So I would, you know, rip off a branch of that, strip it down. Give it a good cut. And going back to this arrangement, I wanted to just put something in the middle there. We need a couple. And eucalyptus smells wonderful. I'm such a big fan of it. One more. I'm going to take a step back, kind of assess what's going on here. One here. It kind of fills in some space. Again, different textures. And it's nice because it kind of complements where the, you know, where the tulips are going. 
got like a little buddy. Another flower that, that's coming out soon. Um, this is called Sweet William. I love this. And this comes in, for me, it comes in like, uh, like a pen stem bunch. And this breaks apart. And then you've got these great little bunches of beautiful flowers. So if you took your low cube vase, you could also kind of pop some of these in instead of all of the hydrangea on the bottom. So again, this is Sweet William and a lot of fun. Spring is just so inspiring. I mean, you come off of poinsettias and ferns or, or uh, a lot of pine. And I, I, I kind of think like it's, it's just a whole new world when spring flowers open up and peonies are coming out in like a week or two that I'll have access and that's really exciting. People love peonies. It's such a short filled season, but they're beautiful. Um, and you know, when, when you buy them, there is like a, a price tag to them, but you know, you're buying them and, and, and they are longer lasting. Um, they don't have all the little ants and stuff on them that if you grew them, you know, um, you sometimes have to battle with that, but uh, zinnias are coming out. Um, uh, the summer dahlias come out in the fall. So it's just the start of an exciting season. So um, does anyone have any questions? What would the approximate cost be of that, the main one you did to buy the tulips and the delphiniums and eucalyptus? So this one here? Yes, that one. So this particular arrangement, uh, like if you were to buy it from like a florist or, or to buy it uh, at a supermarket? Is there a big difference from where you buy it, uh, both I guess cost-wise and does it make more sense to get it from a florist? Do you get more bang for your buck? So that's a great question. Um, and Yes, 100%. Now that I'm in this business for a year and a half, I understand why florists charge what they charge. Um, some people feel, oh, I can just go to the supermarket and, and, and buy, you know, buy this. And while that's true, the, the bottom line is the florist is getting the freshest flowers possible. Uh, they're going to process them. So when I get these um, and they arrive in like, you know, paper and rubber bands and things, um, I immediately cut them, cut it open, have to unpack it. And I'm, I'm trimming them right away on an angle and putting them in water. And that's beginning the processing part of, uh, of you know, having the flowers. So the supermarkets, they aren't necessarily processing them thoroughly or correctly. You don't necessarily know how long they've been sitting there in those buckets. Um, I keep my buckets, you know, meticulously clean, uh, scrubbing them. I scrub every vase, no matter if it's new or reused, like, you know, hot soapy water. So there's time spent that a florist is putting into and, um, Believe it or not, when you buy locally, so I, again, this Van Dyke farm in South Jersey is fabulous and it's great to support local farms. Uh, I really feel it's a dying business, which is unfortunate. This is a family business that's been going on for 65 years, but there is a price tag to supporting local. Um, and that's okay because your arrangement is going to last. It's not going to die within two or three days. Um, you know, Mary at Van Dyke was explaining, they pay their employees well. Minimum wage in New Jersey is, you know, it, it's gone up because the cost of living has gone up. You know, there's there's water and, and just, you know, the cost of bundling up and packaging those flowers, the rubber bands, the paper, however, you know, the little boxes, there's a cost to all of that. So, um, 
buying things from a florist, I know firsthand, Beely Blooms, your stuff's going to last because I've taken care of it. I'm going to give you, you know, my own guarantee of, hey, listen, if you you call me up and your things didn't hold up very well, I will gladly replace it. And I feel like, you know, if you went and bought it at the local supermarket, they're going to tell you, I don't know if they'll tell you, they'll give you your money back. Um, and that's the thing, you know, there's, there is a difference. I 100% you know, think you should support local, local businesses, local farms. Um, I am also a fan of do it yourself. So there is nothing wrong with, you know, buying the supermarket bouquets. But again, for me, I like the longevity of things. And I firmly stand behind, you know, you get what you pay for. This may be a simple question, but could you go to a florist and buy the stems and then make your own bouquet kind of happy medium? Um, you know, that is a really interesting question. I, I've never known, uh, well, so actually I take that back. It's not that I've never known. I Locally, I didn't know that that could be done. You could contact Beely Blooms and we can make an arrangement, but there are some florists who, when you uh, walk in, they have like a build your own bouquet um, so in, they'll have a variety of buckets, like kind of on a rack and every stem that you pull out, you're building your own. So it might be two, $3 a stem. And then yes, you can purchase it from them and then go home and put it together. So it would be slightly, slightly cheaper. Um, but you know, maybe not as cheap as the, the supermarket, you know, buying those, um, separately. And I'm sorry, I didn't really answer your question. Um, something like this, if you're not even including the vase, because this is like a premium bottom, this is not your average clear glass bottom that comes with an arrangement. Um, you know, this is it's probably close to like $50. But again, it, it's going to last. And um, uh, I would add a little bit more to it, but you know, you could buy it, those elements cheaper and, and try to do it yourself, yes. Hope that answered. Yeah, I would think a delphinium would cost more than a tulip. <laughs> oh, yes, you know, and <laughs> how uh, a florist comes up with their pricing is, you know, they, um, they have to break it down per stem. Um, yes. Yep. And your delphinium, uh, I don't, maybe this came in a bunch of eight, whereas the tulips were 10. So you're getting less sometimes when it's a, a super premium product. Um, and you know, there is a higher price tag, but again, I came across so many people during the pandemic. And I think that's what keeps Beely Blooms in business. Is it makes people happy. You know, COVID, if you're home all day and you're looking at the same four walls, I can't tell you how many times, you know, I've just rotated from the kitchen to the living room to the family room, you know, and doing circles. And, you know, at least if there was something nice to look at, it makes me a little bit happier. I think that's what people factor in COVID and they're willing to, to pay for it. So Beely Blooms has a, you know, a monthly flower club. You make arrangements. You can have fresh stems delivered to you, you know, once a week, twice a month, however. So, um, you know, it's, everyone has their vices. <laughs> my, my friend told her husband that she likes bouquets. So now there's always a fresh bouquet in the house. Whenever one starts going, he orders another one. That's so. great. And so what you could do is you can ask, or, uh, you know, if you are calling up and ordering from uh, a florist, the best thing you could do to ensure the freshest stems is to say, hey, do designer's choice. You know, you put together what you think, here's my budget. If you want to throw out like maybe a favorite flower, or she loves tulips or she loves yellow, that's a great guide for the florist. But asking for the designer's choice is the best way to ensure you're getting the, the freshest, best flowers. Um, and if you don't need the, the glass, you know, if this is, you know, you already have all these glass cubes and stuff, 
ask for a hand tied bouquet. I do a lot of those saves a few dollars and you know, you're getting a fresh, beautifully arranged flowers that you can then, um, you know, uh, take home and arrange yourself. Our, our copiers going off here, but did anyone else have any questions? I know I'm in the office at work. <laughs> the pros and cons of zooming, but um, oh, I'm just happy my dogs are quiet today. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I think they're amazing. Um, and one thing you didn't say is you have, you know, experience and technique. Like everyone else who's an expert at what they do, it's easy to say, oh, I can do that. But, but of course, it's fun to play around. And right. some people and I take think from their own flowers if they have their yeah. own tulips and the deer didn't get them and the bunnies, you know, poor Scythia and whatnot. Well, Van Dyke did say that. Um, um, no, thank you for the comment. Uh, it is very hard. They, they don't have an answer as to how to avoid the deer eating um, the, the flowers. So somebody can come up with something fantastic other than, you know, truly like a greenhouse or a fence, or as we talked about before, flowers that kind of deter deer. But, um, you know, I have sprays in the fall for my mums and it works, it lasts a little bit. But you got to keep reapplying it and staying on top of it because otherwise they'll they're going to town. They are. Well, thank you once again, and I do encourage everyone watching um, if you enjoyed this to go watch the Valentine's one. That was all about roses and things you never knew, and that was and, and tips and tricks. So you always come up with some great stuff. I don't know if we oh, still have the Halloween you. one, but just putting the little pumpkin, which I never thought about and building it around a, a what do they call the little tiny pumpkins? But um, yeah, the little mini ones. Yeah, the mini ones. So you always do great stuff. And we look forward to seeing you again. And I do hope those watching to watch this one and, and watch the Valentine one that is still on our YouTube page, Hundred and County Library YouTube page. So happy spring, everyone go out and smell the flowers. <laughs> <laughs> and keep those deer us. away. <laughs> All right. Thanks again. Thank you and take again, care. everyone. Thank you and take care. <laughs> See you soon.